Hi everyone. This is a video tutorial on how to make transforming pixel art images. So transforming pixel art images are when you start out with one image and then you end up with a different image at the end of the activity. So how this works is I can start off with this image and as I enter the correct answer, my image slowly changes into a new one. So I made this as part of my digital escape and I decided to make a separate video for those who would like to learn about how to make this type of pixel art activity. On my blank uh, spreadsheet, I'm going to reserve some cells for my pixel art. So I'm just going to start with the letter J and work my way to the back. If I need more cells later on, I can always add more later on. So I'm going to resize my cells to fit my pixels to make them square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the top all the way to the end and then I'm just going to choose a column to change the size of. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and then once I think I have the right size I can do the same for the row. So I can just high click on the corner, choose a cell and just change the size. So I'm making transforming pixel art so I have an original image and then a transformed image. So what I want to do is I want to work backwards. So I'm going to make my after image first and then I'm going to make my before image. So I'm going to start making my after image. So here is my pre-created pixel art image. So I'm just going to use this as a guide to help me create my pixel art. So here is where I'm going to start. It's going to be black, but I'm going to choose a lighter color for when I do my conditional formatting. Um, so I'm just going to choose, for now, a light gray color. So that's going to be my black. And then I'm just going to count the number of squares across. So then I'm going to mark where that ends. So here's one. So here it is. So I'm going to fill it here. Then I'm going to do the same. I ha Once I have marked the outline of my pixel art, I can now go to fill the rest of the outline. I'm going to click on the cell and then I'm going to hold my command key and then while I do that, I'm going to highlight all the cells I want to be filled. Okay, once I've done that, I can then click my fill color and then my whole outline is filled. Now I can continue to fill the rest of my pixel art. So now that I'm done with creating my pixel art, notice that all the colors are light colors. It makes them easier to see when you set up the conditional formatting. Before I do that, I'm going to create my table where our students are going to enter their answers. So here I'm going to need two columns. So I'm just going to right click and, and I'm going to add another column. So I'm going to insert one to the right. Okay, I like to create the number of clues based on the number of colors I have. So it looks like I'll have five different colors, so I'm going to have five clues. Once I'm done setting up my table, now I can set up my conditional formatting. So since I don't have my activities created yet or done yet, um, I'm just going to put placeholder answers. Uh, first, I have to decide what's going to change. Since I don't want the players to know that red is going to be the imposter, that will be my last clue. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find all of my cells that are going to be in red. I'm going to then hold my command key, and I'm going to highlight each uh, cell that is red. Okay, once I have highlighted all the cells that are in red, I am going to now start conditional formatting. Okay, so to do that, I'm just going to go to Format, OK, 
conditional formatting. And you can see that uh, all my highlighted cells are here. Um, so I'm going to, my format rules is going to be a custom formula, so it's all the way at the bottom. I'm going to say equal, and then I want it, when they have the correct answer in this cell, so it would be J6, so I'm going to put equal dollar sign J dollar sign 6. And for now, it's going to be, since it's a text, I'm going to type in answer. If it was a, a number, you don't need to put it in quotes. So at this point, now I can change my color to the red that I want. So the reason why I did that was, is because I can see all the cells when I highlight. So I'm going to choose this red. Done. So here I have uh, white and I have light blue, but I want them to change color for the same clue. Uh, so if I want that to happen, I'm going to have to create separate conditional formulas for each, but for them to change with the correct answer for the same clue. So I would have to make a conditional formula for the white. Okay, and then I'm going to have to make a separate conditional formula for the blue, but it will be the correct answer for the same clue, which is clue number two. And if I test my color and I don't like the color, I can always go in and change it. I just click on the, just one of the cells in the range that I want to change, and then click on the, the paintbrush. You can see it lights up to the color that you want it to be. And then you go to conditional formatting, and then click on your format rules, and then you can change it to the color that you want. Once I am done setting up my conditional formatting, I can check to see if it works. Okay, my conditional formatting works. Okay, so once I've, I am satisfied and happy with my conditional formatting and everything works, I can highlight this whole section and click on the fill color and reset. Okay, and then I can delete my answers. And now I have a blank slate. Uh, this imposter is still there because we are going to hide this text after we put in our new image. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to now create my before image. So I'm going to apply the same concept as I did to do my original. Okay, so I have my completed before pixel art, my beginning image. Um, when I created this, I just used the normal colors, not the lighter pastel colors, because I'm not going to do any conditional formatting on this. If you notice that it says here, uh, the imposter, so what we want to do is we also want to camouflage this so that it's not seen. So to do that, you just find um, whatever color can cam camouflage it. There it goes. Um, then you now will notice that there's a huge uh, gap there. Well, we're going to remove the grid lines anyway, so it will be hidden once we remove the grid line. To remove the grid lines, you just go to View, Grid Lines, and undo the grid lines. And now, if everything looks the way you like it, then you're done with your pixel art. Okay, so now we can test this to see if it looks the way we like it. Okay, so I can enter my answer. Once you test it and everything looks the way you like it, then you are done. And that's it.